There we go. Now, where's my... Oh, my wall tool's on. Alright, so, we're going to go up here to draw a wall. I'm going to grab my wall tool. And I do not have my property bar popping up, so I'm going to grab my property button right here, if your property bar doesn't show up. Now, with my property bar, come over to where it says basic wall, generic 8 inch, underneath. There's a small tab that says Edit Type. I'm going to go ahead and select that Edit Type button. Then I'm going to come over to here, and I want to immediately rename my generic 8-inch wall and hit Duplicate. And now I'm going to rename it so that it's going to be 2 by 6. W is width. And actually, let's do half-inch sheeting. And then I'm also going to hit W because I want to put with siding. Okay? So now it's renamed. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. You can see the new name occur right here in the type area. Now we're ready to start giving the wall its layers. All right. So now what we need to do is to create the structure of the wall. We're going to hit the Edit button right next to the word Structure. And what this brings up is the layers of our wall. What you can do, if you want to see the layers as they are being built, you can hit this preview button down here. What that does is it gives you a cut view or a floor plan view of your wall. So right now, this wall has one structural element. There is no material assigned, and the thickness is 8 inches. So we need to go ahead and change that. We want to set this up for a 2x6 wall. So we're going to go ahead and change our thick. Okay, so we're going to set up our thickness. And we'll click on the word in the area here for thickness. And instead of being 8 inches, we're going to get rid of the 8 inch. And I'm going to go ahead and put in 5, space, 1 slash 2 for 5 and a half. And that's the thickness of a 2 by 6. We'll also go ahead and we're going to change the material. So where it says by category, we're going to go ahead and select by category. And we can pull down by category right here. And what's happening is our material browser is loading. And it can take some time to load because it's a pretty big size uh, category here. And what we need to so I'm going to go ahead and type in the beginning of the word insulation. And what I'm going to select is the structure wood joist rafter layer bat insulation because this is what's going to go in between your studs for your wall once you select it hit okay and now that has become the material that is associated with that thickness okay next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come down and hit the word insert because i want to insert another layer to my wall the layer that i'm inserting is actually going to be a structural layer and this is going to be my outside sheathing. Notice that the new layer has been placed above my bat insulation layer. And it's on the exterior side. The word here, exterior, is the outside. Down here, it's the interior. Okay. And I'll work my way across this way. I'm going to grab my material. I'll grab by category. And I'm going to select my little browse button right next to it. And now this pops up. Now what I need to do is go find the wood sheathing layer. So I'm going to type in wood, see if we get a browse here, and there it is, plywood sheathing. So I'll go ahead and select plywood sheathing, and I'll hit OK. Now the material is applied to that layer. And then I'm going to slide across the thickness, and I'm going to go ahead and select my thickness, delete the zero, and I'm just going to put in half inch. Actual OSB the true dimension given is actually 7 sixteenths. If for our purposes here, half inch will work just fine. And Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a new layer for our siding layer. I'm going to hit the word insert. And you can see that that new layer has been added above my core boundary. If for some reason it has been added below, I can use my up and down buttons to position it properly, but my siding layer will be on the outside of my core boundary. I'm now going to go into my material browser. I'll select by category. I'll select my little browse button. And then here I'm going to go ahead and try to find 
the clabbered siding. Okay, now I'm not finding this in this particular project. <clears throat> so what I need to do is I need to come down and I need to open my material browser. And what I do is I select this little button up here and this shows, hides the library panel because I need to load something from the library. And I'm going to go ahead and pull my material browser larger. And I mouse over these small little areas until my cursor turns into two arrows and I can pull and stretch this. The original clap that I typed in here for my search is showing up here as siding clapboard. And then I can double click on that. It now becomes part of my project and I double click on clapboard siding. It is now the material that is associated with layer one. And I just need to now give it thickness, which will give that a half inch of thickness as well. I'll click somewhere else in my layer structure, and I can now see that I have got a layer outside of my sheeting, my sheeting, and then this is my stud layer or insulation layer. And let's go ahead. We're finished building the wall. We'll go ahead and hit OK. We're going to have to hit OK again. And now you can see this is our wall here in our properties. It says 2x6 with sheeting, siding. And we would be ready now to start drawing with this particular wall. Before we actually start drawing with this wall, the only other thing that I want you to be aware of is the height. Right now, the top constraint of this wall is unconnected, and the unconnected height is 20 feet. So when we start drawing, we're going to be drawing at a wall that's 20 feet tall. I'll show you how to adjust that in a little bit. The location line at the top of the screen here, or found over here in your property browser, which says wall center line and wall center line, I want you to change that so that it is core face exterior, because the core face exterior is going to be the sheathing face and all of our dimensions go to the sheet. Okay, with core face exterior selected, we can go ahead and start drawing. So I'm gonna click and pull, and I'll zoom in on my wall so I can see that blue dotted line is my location line. It's the indicator of my location line, which is on the outside of my wall. I'm now gonna go ahead and type in the distance, which I believe is 20 feet, space, six inches, hit enter. And then I'm going to start coming down 20 feet, space, 6 inches. Enter. And just keep working your way around. And the last one you can come up and just select, and Revit will clean up the final wall for you. All right, now that you've got your walls drawn, hit Escape to exit the wall tool. I want you to go up to the Manage tab at the top of the screen. I want you to slide over to the word that says Object Styles. Select Object Styles. And I want you to slide all the way down to the bottom of the Object Styles to where it says Walls. And where the Cut Wall Weight line is make that a number one and hit OK. Then at the bottom of the screen select find and you should be able to see layers of your wall.